As we're getting ready to check the results of a root bridge election that's already occurred and look at the four, yes, four different ways that we can spot a root bridge and spot a not root bridge, it occurred to me that I did not put any port numbers on this diagram. Now, I promise not to do this to you very often, if at all, again, after this, but you know, we, we want all the information there, but sometimes we go to a client site and a network map and it doesn't have all the information we want either. What command can I use right now, assuming both of these are Cisco switches, and there's your big hint, as to, um, to see what ports are connected to which ports. I even hate to insult you with that question. Show CDP neighbor, right? We're gonna run that in a minute. But what else should I run here? If I'm checking you know, connectivity between these two switches over this crossover cable, that's called a what? It's a trunk. So we really should run show interface trunk as well. And just for fun, I'm running a couple of different modes. I'm running desirable on one of them, auto on the other. We're using ISL encapsulation here. We know the deal there that everything is getting encapsulated, but using it in a lab environment is not going to hurt us. And let's run show CDP neighbor. And we can see first off going from left to right. Let me slide it over just a little bit. Both of the, both of the connections are to switch two. And I'm not sure if you've seen that yet. But if you see the same ID here more than once, you know, you can have more than one physical connection to a device. And usually with our switches, we like that. So we could see here that the first connection is local interface 13 to remote interface 11. And then our local interface fast ethernet 0 slash 14 is connected to the remote switches 0 slash 12 interface. So we're all good there. We're ready to go. And now we want to start seeing what's going on with this root bridge election, or in this case, what has happened with the root bridge election. And we're going to do that with show spanning tree, which is a legal command in and of itself. And if I hit that, right now I'm just getting VLAN 1. But if I had lots of other non-default VLANs, it would be showing me all of those as well. So you want to filter it a little bit. And this is the command you should get used to using, show spanning tree VLAN, or just show spanning VLAN. And then you can put in a range because you might have 50 VLANs and you don't want to use show spanning tree to see all 50 of them. That would be crazy. But you do have to put the number in. So let me do that thing. And uh, there is one huge hint directly in front of us that this bridge is the root. Can you spot it? And I hate to even insult you by saying this, but uh, here it is. This bridge is the root. I'm going to show you the other three here in a moment. But first I want to explain to you why we see two fields of information that are just about the same. Because right under spanning tree enabled protocol IEEE, we see a field with priority and address and a bunch of timers listed. And that's about it. But the thing is, we're seeing them twice. The thing is, the information here at the front, excuse me, I should say at the top of the output, this is about the root bridge. This is the priority of the root, this is the MAC address, and these are the timers that have been set on the root. The, the next bunch of information here, technical term there, is the bridge ID. This is the information on the local switch. So you see a priority and you see a MAC address and we see some timers. So everything's looking good there. Now, um, notice here there are some similarities. That means that we are indeed on the root. Now, I know you're looking at this and you're saying, well, Chris, it says this bridge is the, is the root. Exactly how many more ways do I have to figure this out? I would know three of them. I would know three other ways to do this. And if you're looking at a bridge or a switch that is the root, first off, of course, this bridge is the root is the big hint. But if you see the same MAC address under root ID and under bridge ID, you just might be a root switch, or actually you're on the root switch. Now, we've got two more here, and let's see, we've got the MAC address and bridge. Um, interestingly enough, they both have something to do with these port statuses. Now, here are the interfaces that are part of VLAN 1, interfaces 13 and 14. We see something under role DESG. That stands for designated. And the thing is, this sounds weird at first. Your root bridge will not have any root ports. Because what we're going to see when we look at a non-root is you're going to see some ports here, or at least a port, that says root under roll. But the root switch itself does not have root ports. Okay, Got to get a little zen here to really fully understand this, I think. It does sound odd. But the thing is, on a non-root, the root 
port is the one that's being used to reach the root. Well, the root bridge itself doesn't need a root port. It doesn't need to reach itself. It is itself. Okay, so it's just one of those oddities. Get used to it and you won't give it a second thought. But again, on the root, you will not see any root ports. Now also, there's one more way. You know, we've looked at the bridges, the root, we've looked at the MAC addresses, we've looked at the roles. There's one more way, and that's that all of these ports are in forwarding mode. Now, or both of them in this case. Now, going back to the diagram, I'm not pulling a fast one on you here. These are the only two switches involved. These are the only two cables involved. And it might surprise you to find out so far that STP, even though it's trying to prevent switching loops, I mean, that's what we run it for, it has not put any ports on switch one into blocking mode. Hmm. So when we get to switch two, which by process of elimination must be the non-root, then uh, we better see something in blocking mode. But again, just to review, and you really should know all four of these ways to do it. First off, this bridge is the root. That's the easy one. Then the MAC addresses under root ID and bridge ID will match if you're on the root. If you're on the root, you will not see a root port but what you will see is all involved ports in forwarding mode. You won't see any ports in blocking mode. So what's going on over on the non-route, you ask? I'm glad you asked. That's coming up next.